Welcome fellow fixers to the Frankie Fix YouTube channel and I appreciate all the subscribers. Uh, the channel is growing and I appreciate it. Uh, today we have this Facebook find. It was on a free group uh, in Western New York and uh, the person listed it as free so uh, I was out and about and I thought let me stop over there and check it out and we have this Honda GVC 190 engine it's a Craftsman mower from 2004 and it's kind of unique in that it has these wheels here that uh, it's like a zero turn mower and I've never actually seen these type of uh, wheels on a lawnmower it's quite unique it kind of looks like a cross between a wheelchair and a lawnmower if you look at the wheels uh, on the front of a wheelchair so you can see the sign here the free sign and it does need some cleaning up we're going to clean it all up uh, i believe the person listed as the uh, spark plug needs a spark plug and some gas um, you have a lever here that controls the height of the rear wheels just one lever does both of them you can see the model number and serial number here and it looks like uh, March 26th 04 when you have a craftsman if you look at the, the serial number the first two digits are going to be the month the third and fourth digit are going to be the day and then the last two will be the year there so it's a little bit dirty but it's a it looks like an interesting uh, thing to dive into so stay tuned we're going to dive into it uh, and with all that said let's get into it Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean this thing up. We're going to get the hose. We'll get some Dawn Power Wash. Uh, it doesn't look like it's in bad shape at all. I don't see a lot of rust. And if there is some rust, we can take care of that. Uh, but we're going to begin by just cleaning this thing up. Because uh, I like to work on things when they're all clean. And we'll dig into the carburetor. We'll check the spark. Uh, check out the gas tank. If we have to clean that, we'll do that. We'll clean all the wheels. We'll go through this thing with a fine tooth comb so stick around all right so the first thing I'm gonna do is remove this chute here it's basically useless for me because I don't have the bag and I just like the mulching capability so I'm not going to use a bag so if you look over here you'll see there's a little screw or a knob that you can turn and we can release this and I'll take that right out of there Then we can reattach this part and put this thumb screw back in. And that's good enough for me. So I'm going to start to uh, clean this thing up and uh, we'll see how good we can make it look. All right, so I was out in the garage the other night and I saw some bees in the garage. And so I thought, well, I gotta get this thing outside and uh, check it out. And look what we found 
on the inside here. Now that's the cover that I took off. And I just saw a bee fly in there. So it's a good thing I brought this outside because it was I never get bees in the garage and I just started seeing one and then I saw another. So what a nice pleasant surprise. So what I'm going to have to do is get this in the backyard and probably spray it with some water or something. There's no way I'm touching that. Bees! Bees in the car! Bees everywhere! God, they're huge! They're ripping my flesh off! see any. I think there was just a few in there. Well, I'm going to move this mower and then uh, try to clean this up here. Alright, so here's what we have left here. I don't see any bees. There was a couple that flew out of there, but other than that, I don't see any more. It's just a pile of whatever the hell it is. But we'll take care of it to try to scoop it up with a shovel because uh, I'm not touching it. I think it was an active nest at one time and it was becoming an active nest again. I'm not sure. Bees are not my specialty. Alright, so Brian's probably laughing right now. Brian's the guy who uh, provided me this mower. Very cool guy. I was talking to him a little bit on Facebook. Uh, he probably didn't know that there were bees in there. Maybe he did. But uh, maybe he didn't. But thanks, Brian. Anyway, just thank you to Brian Hines for uh, giving me this mower. We got the curb. Uh, like I said, we spoke a little bit. Seems like a really cool guy. And so, uh, it's crazy, but I still see bees flying. Like, I cleaned it all out. The nest is totally gone. It's almost like there's a scent still on here, because I see one or two flying around the mower. And I know I have cleaned it all up. I cleaned the underside of it as well. Anyway, with all that fun being said, uh, let's continue with the uh, video. Okay, so we have our Craftsman mower here, and we've taken off the rear cover. Of course, we've cleaned up our little insect issue we had. And we have the pulley here, which looks like it's in good shape. The belt is in good shape. Here you have the belt tensioner, and you see the cable here, and that runs up to the, uh, the easy walk handle. So when you press the handle, it tightens the belt up and goes around that pulley you see right here. And what I've done is taken the motor off. It's just going to be a little easier to do the oil up on the bench. And we're going to clean the carburetor. I did take off the blade as well. But like I said, it wasn't that hard. There's only, on this one, there was only three bolts. There's supposed to be four. So one's missing. Not sure what happened there. Maybe it vibrated out or something else was done. Not sure. But it matters not. 
three bolts or plenty I could probably dig up another one but really simple to remove the motor I think it's a lot easier than being down especially if you have a bad back or your back is sore and so we're gonna get up on the table here and uh, take a look at the engine all right so here's our engine we have a Honda GCV 190 very familiar with this engine. I've actually got a couple other ones with the uh, GCV 160 and they're not without their issues but for the most part they run pretty reliably. Now we did have this this has an automatic return choke. It's not an automatic choke uh, that's used uh, to automatically control and open and close the choke. Um, those work off of the muffler typically uh, where it generates heat and uh, when, the, when it generates the heat it'll automatically uh, open or close the choke but in this case this is an automatic return choke so what's supposed to happen is the cable would go here on the handle and when you open this cable it releases it and it's supposed to move over like you see there so that's working properly a lot of times this will get hung up here and it won't move but the idea is when you start it that it's going to gradually open the choke as the engine is running of course the vibrations of the motor are going to help that move over too uh, we have the fuel line here which I think we're going to replace it's a little hard it's not cracked or anything but I figure since I have it off we can go ahead and replace that we can take a look at the filter, which isn't really in bad shape, it's not too bad. A little dirty, but I think we can blow that out with the air compressor. Uh, we have the air box here, and uh, these are known for being a, a joy to work on because when you remove these bolts, there's like five gaskets that line up in there to get the carburetor off, but we're going to go through that. We're going to remove these 10 millimeter. That's the nice thing is everything on here is pretty much 10 millimeter. So we can zip through and remove it. We just have to uh, be careful because all the gaskets are going to fall out. Uh, we're going to remove this cover here. Uh, let's check out the fuel, fuel tank. This definitely looks dry. I don't see anything inside of there. And it doesn't smell bad so that's good he must have uh, removed the gas before he stored it so uh, let's get on with the carburetor removal actually what I think I'll do first is let's go ahead and uh, check for spark on here so to do that I'm going to turn since it's off the engine a little hard pull in this uh, recoil I'm going to hook a drill up to it and spin it and we'll take a look at the spark but we have to remove this cover and there's three three nuts right here and they're going to be 10 millimeter so we'll go ahead and remove those we don't have any fuel in here so that's a good thing it's going to be a lot easier to work with we're going to change the oil so that'll be easier so we got the recoil here, checking it out. I do notice with these Hondas, they have these, see these cogs that come out? These are what grab the flywheel. They come out when you pull it. So I always make sure I lubricate those. So I'm definitely going to do that, but it's got good movement. Uh, a lot of times these cogs will break. I actually have another mower where one of these broke. But surprisingly, it still works with just the one of them. So that's pretty cool. So we'll take this off. You're going to have these spacers here. Sometimes they fall out. But they didn't in this case, so that's good. So you could see the... Uh, that's where the gas tank is here. Built right in here. So here we have our brake. And what that does is, when this is hooked up to the cable on the uh, handle, and when you pull the mower to start it, the brake 
comes away from the flywheel here. And that's basically just so when you stop the mower, it stops the blade from spinning. So we're going to have to lock that up somehow because we're going to spin this flywheel and it's not going to work with the brake. So I'm going to figure something out where we can lodge something in here and maybe we'll just remove the spring. Here you'll notice there's a switch that's the kill switch usually I'll spray a little something in there too just spray a little of this I've been using this silicone specialist stuff from WD-40 and I just work the switch a little bit so we have our brake separated. I think I'm just going to tie it up with something. Or maybe I can use this spring. Yeah, that'll work. I just used the spring there to hold it. And uh, let me get a socket and uh, we'll see if this thing has some spark. Alright, I'm going to spin this. I'm using a three quarter inch socket on the flywheel and I'm just going to use the drill to spin it. And what we're looking for is right here see if we have a spark so it looks good looks like we got a spark so let's put that back in and uh, start working on the carburetor and remove these 10 millimeter bolts right here. And we're gonna have to take this, loosen this bracket too, so we might as well remove that. Try to take this out together so it doesn't fall all apart, but we just want to check it over. You know, it's probably been sitting for a while. While I've got it apart, I might as well go through everything. I usually do. So I'm kind of holding everything together as best I can. There is a breather hose behind here. We're going to have to unhook here. There's that. We'll clean that up. So you can see we have a gasket here. There's another gasket there. Carburetor's a little dirty on the outside, but not too bad. We have a gasket here and there's a spacer. I don't know if you could see that. There's a gasket. And then there's a plastic spacer here. But what we're going to do is, I'm going to... Kind of a weird looking fuel line here unless somebody repaired it. Maybe that's just a protective cover. Tilt the carburetor to the right. We're going to unhook this uh, linkage here. I 
and the spring you can see kind of wraps this goes through it the uh, governor linkage and just remembering which holes it's just the first two there's only two holes here so that makes it a little bit easier as soon as I get it in position here I can tilt it there we go you just tilt it out and there's that now what we have to do is get this fuel line off of here and the gasket came off that's good didn't tear or anything so we're gonna set that aside we have the spacer here as you can see Kind of a plastic spacer and then this piece of metal I might be able to clean this with this stuff on here I'm just gonna spray it with some carb cleaner and I'll clean up the outside too we'll take the bowl off so let me remove this uh, fuel line here and just get the carburetor by itself and we'll remove this bolt on the bottom take a look inside I hate these small metal clamps. I've actually ordered some better clamps for this. Should be coming tomorrow. So there's our carburetor. So uh, let's go ahead and remove this bowl. Should too be a 10 millimeter. There is a little washer here, want to keep that with it. Shouldn't be any gas in here. So there is some debris in there for sure. It's not horrible, but there's definitely some debris in there. Take this float pin out, lift away the float, the needle just fell out. So there's no spring or anything here, the needle just hangs, just hangs in there. So we'll set that aside, get our needle which the rubber on the end looks good so that looks good we'll make sure we don't lose that so I'm gonna get my uh, carb spray and uh, we'll start uh, taking this thing we're gonna take this emulsion tube out here there's a jet in there we're gonna remove that otherwise it's not horrible So let's uh, move on to that. All right, so let's get this emulsion tube out of here. Sometimes they don't come out right away. You gotta kind of tap it. All right, well that took a few minutes, so I didn't want to bore you with it. But here we have the emulsion tube there's a bunch of holes in it and all I have here is a just basically a twist tie and I stripped off the outer layer of it you can use that to go through these holes just like that just clear them out We'll also use some carb cleaner. We'll 
Watch your eyes with this stuff. We'll get inside the carburetor. Get inside where the needle goes in. Basically anywhere where there's a hole in here and you want to clean it out. Here's the main jet here. Make sure that's clear. That looks good to me. Bowls cleaned up. We'll do a little more in here. This is a Cahen carburetor. It has a number on it, 62K. ARH20. And right here you have your idle adjustment screw. I'm not going to mess with any of that stuff. Um, you know, if it runs like crap, I'll come back and uh, and do that later. But overall, it's it's not horrible. You know, if this was all gummed up, I'd do a little bit more to it. But I've already washed it, cleaned it all up. The gasket's not horrible. We'll have to see how that seals when I get it all back together. But I think it's all cleaned up. What I'm going to do is just lubricate. I'll just take a little uh, WD-40. This is silicone and just give these mechanisms here some lubrication. That looks good. Everything's moving good. It's opening and closing. The spring tension is good. So I think we're good. I think we're going to put the emulsion tube back in here. Uh, put the bowl back on and uh, put it back on the engine. This brass, so don't over tighten it. I noticed it was kind of loose, it wasn't really snug in there. Definitely don't want to cross thread this. That looks like it's going in crooked, so I want to straighten this out. There we go. Now if you're putting it in and you just start to screw it in and it stops here, the emulsion tube hasn't dropped all the way fully where it needs to be. So, cause that, that should be pretty deep in there. So that looks good there. We're gonna take this needle and just kind of set it. 
can see this little tab set it in there it's a little tricky with this sometimes it falls out see if we can get it set in there yeah see it can be somewhat challenging to have this needle hang there while you place it in here Alright, we got it in there. We put our float pin back in. And to test it, you can just clean this up, put your mouth on there, blow some air through it. And what should happen is when this is down like this, you, sh you should not get any air through. But lift it up. And when you blow through here, you should hear the air. Now, if you didn't know, this is a drain screw. For if you're going to store it for the winter, you can drain the gas out. But what I like to do is just use the uh, shutoff valve and let it run out of fuel before I put it away. And this should go on like this with the bolt is pointing where this pin is and we'll put our float bowl nut back on there or bolt and you don't have to get crazy but tightening that down if it leaks, you can always uh, just give it a little bit more tightening once it's uh, on there. Because you can get to this bottom of the bowl. You just can't get to any of these adjustments once it's all back together. Alright, so we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so here you can see, I got lucky, this gasket just kind of stuck there. I'm just going to leave it alone. But you can see how it goes if it fell out and you had to put it back on. That's the first one that you put on. And you can see how on the right side of it, it's, it's bigger here. Now the other part is this plastic spacer. And you can see how the this side is that goes on here. It's kind of indented inward here. And then on the other side, there's another gasket. So that's going to go like this. So what I like to do is just get the screw started in here. You can see this gasket here is going to go in like this. You can see that little kind of a hole indentation there and there's a hole in the gasket. So that's going to go like that. So it's a lot easier if you put the screws in first. And sometimes these spacers fall out. These are so when you tighten them down, you don't crush the plastic. They're kind of like tubular spacers in there. So we're gonna just put the screws in first, or the bolts. We'll put our one gasket in. without breaking it. Just like that. Then we can put our carburetor in which it's going to go the this fuel supply to the right. 
so we'll drop that in there. Then it's going to be this way. You could see the gasket on this side. Then it's going to go in like this. Now one thing you have to be aware of, and I'll remove this, is this little lever that's here needs to go on the right. See that little lever that comes out on the right of this? So you can see see how that operates because if you get it together and it's on this side you're gonna to have to take it all apart so just keep that in mind but you can see how this automatic return choke is returning but like I said if it wasn't before you uh, replace it try to put some uh, lubricant inside of here Just make sure it moves from the right to the left smoothly like that. It doesn't hang up. So that looks good. So now we're going to get this carburetor back onto this air box here. Just like that. We're going to put this on. Just like that. And then we're going to try our hardest to hold everything together and, uh, and get this in here and tighten these bolts down. But we are going to have to also connect this breather hose right here. All right, so we have to put this piece back on first. And I've already put the linkages on. The spring goes in the first hole here and the governor rod linkage here goes in that second hole. So we have that all set. So we're gonna have to hook the gas line up. as we position this just like that we'll go ahead and put our gas line in now, this line isn't too bad I'm gonna I think I'm gonna replace this other one We have to put our clip back on. Our clamp. Kind of slide it over. going to go like that. So you can see there's a gasket stuck on here. So there's a gasket on the opposite side here. So that'll have to go there. Just match up the holes here. So it'll be something like that. Gasket here, which will be the one that's gonna touch up against the air box when we tighten it down. 
gasket on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and put this 10 millimeter bolt back in here. And how you know it's right is you can see the hose. It has a little round cutout here for the uh, breather hose. slide our spacer in there in the back it can be a little tricky but it can be done this side to the right up we'll get that in place want to make sure this piece here is to the right of this choke here and we have our two bolts ready in here going to start it it doesn't leave us much room but we're going to get this breather hose in there it can be kind of tricky breather hoses in there and I like to do these a little by hand first so you don't strip the uh, you don't strip them out so I'm just going to take the 10 millimeter and the ratchet that seems okay everything seems to be in place and the way you know if that lever that sticking out is, is in the proper position, like I said, it should be to the right of that choke, is when you operate it, you're going to see this plate close. When you t put it all the way to the right, that puts the choke in the uh, on position. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. All right, so just to uh, rehash, we have a gasket against the engine. We have the plastic spacer. We have the metal uh, piece here. We have another gasket. We have the carburetor. We have another gasket. We have the metal mounting uh, piece. Uh, we have a gasket on the opposite side of that and then the plastic cover. So if you're unsure of it, you can just uh, look on Google, look up uh, GCV 190 or 160, they're pretty much the same. Um, service manual PDF, just like that, and it should come up and it'll be in the service manual. They have an exploded view of the order of all the gaskets. 
on. You just have to remember to put this spring back on. For the governor. And we're going to return this spring back to where it belongs uh, right now. We're just using it to tension back this uh, lever so we could spin the uh, spin the engine over. So we have our spring back in place here, the tensioner spring for this brake. That's working properly. And what should happen is when you pull the uh, lever on the handle, again, just one more time checking it out before we move on to changing the oil. You pull it back and that's supposed to make its way over the white lever there, the choke. So it's that seems to be working, that we've got it all back together. So that's good news. I'm just going to clean this filter as best I can right now. I don't want to get the air compressor out yet, but I'll do this tomorrow. I just want to get this thing running, get the oil change going. So just cleaning it out the best I can. That's good enough. Put her back in there. And there we go. So let's move on to the oil change. We have a container here. We're just going to undo. And the oil is dirty. I don't know if you could see that. It's pretty dirty, so. It's a good thing we're changing this out, and I'm just going to take this engine, tip it, it doesn't even look like there's that much, should be more oil than that in there, this takes about 12 to, here it comes, 12 to 18 I believe, the manual says, I'm going to start with 12 and then check it. I'm just going to leave this kind of sitting in there like that and give it some time to drain out. All right, so as you can see, that oil is pretty dirty. Uh, we have a measuring cup here. It's just from the dollar store. It has ounces on it, and 12 would be all the way to the top here. So I'm going to start off with 12. We're going to fill it up. Uh, and let's do it. Now I do have the engine kind of leveled out with two by fours so I can get a uh, accurate reading here after I'm done. So that's 12. I'm going to let it settle in there for a few minutes and uh, come back to it. With these engines, you don't screw the dipstick in there. You take the measurement just by setting it there and pulling it out. And we're right in the range, uh, more than half. And it's nice and clean. So we're good here. So I just want to take a moment to thank all the subscribers and uh, all the support my best friend Tony for providing me with this GoPro camera. I hope you guys are enjoying the, the clarity of it. Uh, let me know in, your, in the comments how everything looks. I think it's going to turn out good. I hope so. It's always a uh, new experience working with the different cameras. Uh, my other one was a uh, Canon Rebel, which is a very good camera. Um, but it's nice having this uh, upgrade. So thanks again, Tony. And if you guys like the video, uh, like it, subscribe. I appreciate the support. So what we're going to do next is we're going to uh, mount this engine. I think we're going to put the covers back on here first. And then we'll mount the engine back up to the mower, put some gas in it, and see what we get.
and I'm just going to lubricate the recoil here while I've got it out. Ten millimeter. We're inching closer to getting this engine mounted back on. Now I have the older fuel line right here. We took it off. I cut another piece. Cut another piece off. Here's this quarter inch fuel line. Nice and flexible. And we have new clamp here. I'm going to reuse this other clamp. It's still good. But I went and picked up a pack of these on Scamazon. So you can... Uh, Look in the description and I'll leave a link there for them. But 10 bucks, a bunch of different size clamps. What I'm interested in using here is the 11 millimeter clamps. So that, those are the clamps I'm using here. Fuel line clamps. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this fuel line on here. Make sure it's in all the way. That one's good. That's good. That's all there is to it. Easy peasy. Now I was looking at the blade and the blade isn't in that good a shape. It's not sharp at all. It's got some bumps on it. It's kind of like a blunt edge on there. So I'm going to think instead of sharpening this one, I have another one that's in much better shape. I have about three or four of these blades laying around. And this one is sharp here. And I'm going to give it a quick sharpening on the grinder, grinding wheel. And uh, it's going to fit in like this. So it's the same, same configuration. Here we have the pulley. Uh, this has the key, but it's built into here. So typically you'd have the half moon key that you'd have to take out of here um, that fits on the shaft. But this one is... Uh, built into this. So I'm probably just going to clean this up a little bit with the wire brush. Clean it up a little bit and uh, we'll work on getting this uh, engine put back on there. Try it out. But first I'm going to just lightly sharpen this blade. It's not bad. But I'm going to lightly sharpen it anyway. Clean it up. You know, I'll put a little uh, Take a rag, put a little three-in-one oil on it, and uh, yep, that's where we are. I think I'm pretty happy with that. 
nice and sharp. And what I do is I just put it on the, this handle here on my vise. So you want to see if it's balanced or not. And that looks good. So we're going to get to the uh, deck of the mower here. Get the engine on there and uh, get this thing working. Okay, so I've also painted the uh, transmission shaft here. I've gone through and uh, it's a good idea to lubricate all of these pulleys, lubricate the springs, you know, the cable, anywhere you can lubricate is a good idea. Um, we have the pulley here that's going to go on the shaft of the engine. And we have a cover here that has to go on underneath. It's very simple. This part here just kind of goes into there. And then there's one screw in the front of it that holds that plastic piece on. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get this thing started. Basically, I'm just going to tip this mower. I'm going to put a rock or you can put it under, a, you know, whatever you can do to tip this thing up. And I'm going to start with the top two. Uh, bolts that way it's it's gonna hang from those bolts and uh, it's not the engines not gonna fall off of the thing so let me get started with that all right just to give you a look at the bottom here you have the belt that's already here it's in decent shape I don't see any issues with that you're gonna have your four mounting bolts here and the way this plastic piece goes on is it'll kind of tuck under towards the front of the mower and then you've got this one bolt back here but what you have to do is get the engine mounted first because this pulley part has got to go up this way and then the cover is going to be up here and then we'll mount the blade but overall it looks good underneath here I already did some cleaning you know, I'll see how it runs. Maybe next year, whatever, I'll go ahead and paint underneath here. But now would have been a good time to do it since it's off. The motor's off. It's much easier to paint. But I did so much painting this year. I think I'm going to hold off. You know, see how it runs, how it works. And then uh, I'll address that next year. So we got everything back together, let's give it a whirl. Joke.
a great machine. It worked great. I kind of cut it a little bit low. I, I, it's like I cut a grave in my front lawn there for a minute. And I realized it was too low and I made some adjustments. But the front here, I got to get used to the zero turn too. It was kind of all over the place. But if you lift this and there's this place you can sit it here, then the wheels move freely. But if you put it through the hole, it'll lock in there. And then I made an adjustment in the back. There's one knob that adjusts the height of both wheels, which is nice. But overall, great machines, running great. We did everything we had to do with it for now. So I appreciate everyone watching, all the subscribers, new subscribers. Uh, and uh, if you like the video, like it, subscribe, help support the channel. And we'll see you next time.